Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Hunter. Welcome, you guys, to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, and entertainment, where we give you a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And in today's episode, the topic is who the Clippers should keep in free agency 2020. And I got a lot that I want to unpack in this video today. So before we get into that, I want you guys to please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Be sure to check out our Dreamers Pro Short Clips channel, which is in the description below. And also check out our Dreamers Pro podcast, which we have linked in the description below. So with that being said, <clears throat> let me just get let's let's just get straight into this. So there's a lot of things I want to cover in this video, guys. It may be a little bit longer, but hey, guess what? I just want it to be a little bit thorough. Granted that I uh, you know, I'm not a, you know, I don't, I'm not an agent. I don't work in the NBA. So I may be off on a point here or there, but I'm, you know, I think pretty much what I'm saying is going to be sound uh, to you guys. So let's talk about it. The Clippers have some important decisions that they have to make uh, this off season. And they have a lot of free agents, right? Players that their contracts have expired. You're talking about Montrezl Harrell, Marcus Morris, Jermichael Green, Reggie Jackson, Joe Kim Noah, and Patrick Patterson. So these are the these are the players that they have that um, are free agents this season, and they have to make a decision on who they're going to keep and who they're going to let go and also look forward to see what players can they add. Now, at the end of this, I'm going to explain why I think, you know, some of my some of my re some of the reasoning behind some of the points that I make in this video. So let's just get into it. OK, let's just talk about some of these players and let's just run through some of their stats here. We're not going to go through every single one of them in depth, but let's just go through it. So let's talk about Montrezl Harrell. Montrezl Harrell for the season for the Clippers. He averaged 18.6 points a game, 7.1 rebounds, and 1.7 assists uh, coming off the bench for them. And he had some really, really good pro uh, productivity for the Clippers all season long. He has a lot of great energy. He's a rah-rah guy, but he also plays with, with, a, with a bit of an edge, which a lot of which a lot of things that I appreciate about Montrezl Harrell. However, though, in the playoffs, <clears throat> we saw a drop in his production. In the playoffs, his his point his, his points per game dropped from 18 and well, almost 17, uh, I mean um, 19 points in the, in the regular season dropped to 10.5 points in the playoffs. His field goal percentage was still good. He shot 57% from the field, but he wasn't you know he wasn't the same him. He shot 60% from the three from the free throw line, which isn't really good. Um, uh, really interestingly enough, he got you 2.9 rebounds from 7.1 to 2. 0.9 rebounds that is a significant drop off for your power forward and he got you 0.4 assists dropping from 1.7 in the regular season so if we look at Montrez Harrell's numbers although he played very well throughout the regular season um and I think he improved the uh he proved he approved from what he did the, uh, the previous season season he is in he's going to be in for a major payday why is that because Montrez Harrell has bird rights okay and bird rights um, it's something that they named after Larry Bird. It's a rule that basically says that teams that are looking to re-sign a particular player that has these Bird rights, they can go over the salary cap to sign him. So that's something that's very important for us to remember, that Montrez Harrell does have Bird rights. So now, let's move on and look at uh, Marcus Morris, who I said that in the previous video, I said that they should try to uh, bring back. So for the season, he averaged 16 point, let's say... Um, he averaged what? Yeah, he averaged about 16.7 points, five rebounds, and, uh, and 1.4 assists. But if we look at his productivity with the Clippers, at least, because that's a that's a so, sort of an average. For the Clippers, he averaged 10 points a game. He shot 42% from the field, 31% from the three-point line, and 81% from the free throw line. Now, if we look at his playoff productivity, right? Because this is where I really saw his value. In the playoffs, he averaged 11.8 points a game for the Clippers in 13 games. He shot 50% from the field, which is very good, which means he was very efficient. He was attempting about 8.5 shots a game, making 4.3. And he found his role in that offense because when he first got to the team, I think he was attempting way too many shots uh, in, in the beginning of in the beginning of uh, his, his tenure there. Then his free his his his, um, his three point percentage went all the way up to 47.5%. He was shooting 47.5% from the three-point line, which is exceptional. And he got you 90, and he shot 93% from the free throw line, got you 4.8 rebounds, 1.6 assists, and uh, and almost one steal a game. So Marcus Morris's value uh was there from the beginning and he and he played he played uh you know some really important minutes 
for the Clippers, and he doesn't have uh, he doesn't have bird rights. Now, if we move on to the next player that I'm looking at here, let's look at John Michael Green. John Michael Green is a bench player, role player for the Los Angeles Clippers. He came off the bench, and he played with them. He averaged 6.8 uh, points per game, 6.2 rebounds, which is very good coming off the bench, especially those rebounds. 6.2 rebounds off the bench is 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 is, uh, is fantastic, and it just shows you the, the amount of activity and energy that he plays with. He's a knockdown shooter in the playoffs. He averaged roughly the same points, 6.1 points per game, shot 56% from the field. So the guy, when he was in the game, he was very efficient, and he was just about his business. He shot 43% from the three-point line, which to me was really good. 78% from the free throw line. Got you 3.8 rebounds and 0.5 in assists. So those are his numbers. And obviously, we can just touch briefly on Reggie Jackson, who they acquired midseason. He averaged 11, uh, 12 points, three, three rebounds, and 4.1 assists. But for the Clippers, he averaged 9.5 points. He shot 45% from the field. He shot 41% from the free throw, from three-point line, 90% from the, from the three-point line. He got you three three rebounds and three point two assists. So those are his numbers that he was able to put up, uh, you know, um, uh, this season. Now, now that we gotten those things out of the way, now let's talk about the other aspect of this entire thing. Things to consider. As I said before, Montrez Harold does have bird rights, and because he has bird rights, the team can offer him more money than he did the year before. Now, remember, Montrez Harrell is 26 years old, and his salary last season was $6 million, right? $6 million. So you know that they're going to be paying him much more money this season, given to how he produced all throughout the regular season. Yes, the playoffs, he didn't produce well, but by the end of the season, I think he even won six man of the year, which he did win. So there's no way that he's not going to get a bigger payday. If we're looking at John Michael Green, John Michael Green has a player option, which allows him to play another season with the team if he chooses. However, the team has to pay him a little bit more than they paid him the year before. And John Michael Green earned $4.8 million last season. So if he decides to stay on or, or, or both parties decide to that, you know, it's best for him to continue, they would need to pay him a little bit more. That's something to consider. Now, Marcus Morris does not have a bird or play option. He got paid $15 million, and my question is, I don't know if he's going to get a similar salary this season. That's something that I don't know yet because I, I don't have, um, I, you know, I'm not that versed in all this information. Another thing to pay attention to with these three guys is their age. Montrez Harrell for sure is the younger guy at 26 years old, so that's something that you have to consider when you're, when you're looking at signing players. Marcus Morris is 31 and John Michael Green is 30. But I do like all of these players, especially John Michael Green. John Michael Green was fantastic all season long. And in the playoffs, he showed his value. He knows how to play his role. He comes in, gives you good minutes. So I really like him. Now, if we're looking at decisions to make as far as who to keep and who to let go, for me, I would let go of Reggie Jackson, Joakim Noah, and Patrick Patterson. That's my decision. Number one, the Clippers are searching for true point guards. Some rumors out there have said that they're looking to t try to sign Rajon Rondo. And if that's the case, if they're trying to get Rajon Rondo, you're going to have Rajon Rondo, Patrick Beverly, Lou Williams, and Reggie Jackson as four point guards. I don't know what you're doing with four point guards. Secondly, one of these guys can probably pay the two. So you can probably bring in Lou Williams at the two, Patrick Beverly at the one, and then you already have a starting, uh, you already have a starting um, point guard and you already have a shooting guard, I think, of Paul George. So I don't think they need an additional point guard. Uh, so I would probably let go of Reggie Jackson. Joakim Noah, as I said before, although Joakim Noah only earned uh, $200,000 last season, but he's 37 years old and he didn't even get much run um, when they had him. And Reggie Jackson is another guy that they got paid $700,000. So between the two of these guys, you're looking at less than a million dollars. So uh, for the reasons I mentioned about the point guard, I'll probably let go of Reggie Jackson. Joakim Noah is a little bit older, so they can probably go out there and try to get somebody younger. But they could bring him back, excuse me, for some veteran, uh, for to be a veteran voice in the locker room. So that means that I would try to re-sign Montrez Harrell, uh, Marcus Morris, and John Michael Green, right? Now, as I said before, I'm not sure if Marcus Morris's salary is going to remain the same. However, you're going to need to pay Montrez Harold more money, right? And it's going to be kind of hard to justify letting go 
of a six man of the year. Like it's going to be really hard to kind of sort of sort of um, uh, reconcile that and say, okay, let's get rid of him. It's going to be really hard to do that. So I think they're going to keep him. Um, if I could, I would keep John Michael Green now, and then use the remaining funds of the three players that I let go to go try and get another point guard. But as some of you guys have said, and actually many of you guys have said that the Clippers need a true point guard and also a defensive big, which is something to pay attention to. So if they release the three players that I recommended, their salary cap would stand it. They would have a free space of about 3.2 million, right? So if they release John Michael Green as well, if they say, listen, we're not gonna pick up your player option, then they would free up an additional 4.8 million, putting, giving them uh, basically $8 million in free cap space to now go out there and get a Rajon Rondo and possibly get a good defensive big uh, to fit under the, uh, the salary cap. So these are some of the options that they have. So what I want to know from you guys is quite simple. If you're in the position of the GM of this team, what what moves are you looking to make of these players? What players are you planning on keeping? What players are you planning on let go, letting go of? And why would you make those uh, particular decisions? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Again, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. Be sure to check out some of the other videos that we have on the channel and the videos that we have linked coming up at the end of this video that I'm sure you guys are going to enjoy if you enjoy this video. Once again, thank you guys for your time and your attention. This is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys an amazing day. Peace.